let's roll. Hello everyone and welcome back to Shouted Archive. I'm Wilkie and I'm here with Zenra. Hello. And what's Shonen Archive? I'm glad you asked. Shonen Archive is a series in which me and Zen have dedicated our entire lives to watching every form of Shonen Jump media out there. Uh, still debating some of them. <laughs> I actually had to, I actually recently thought I was like, ah, we, have, we should have a conversation about certain series by certain creators and whether or not we actually want to watch them. <laughs> and figure that out. But we'll figure that out later. That's off screen. <laughs> that was something that yeah, gave us some- that's a conversation for another time. Yeah, you know, after the most recent conversation over a certain game with a problematic creator, it got me thinking of, like, you know, <laughs> Jonah and Joe's got some dudes. It sure does, doesn't it? Sure does. We'll talk about that later, though. No worries. Thankfully, we got one that is very unproblematic, <laughs> except for in case you like your characters, in which case he's the most problematic author out there. <laughs> Uh, and we plan to do this until the entire world explodes, or one of us explodes in some kind of uh, unfortunate accident. Or maybe it's on purpose. Find out what I have in <laughs> store for Zen <laughs> for his 40th birthday. Coming soon. And yeah, we're, we start, obviously our big series is Gintama, and then the ones we switch off of are Kuriko and Jujutsu Kaisen. And today we're talking about Jujutsu Kaisen. Yay! Zen's favorite series. <laughs> By the way, we're going to try very hard to not spoil the manga. <laughs> uh, it's going to take so much effort. It's gonna, yeah. it ta- you have no idea. If you, you have no idea how much this is going to take out of Zen. Zen was popping off spoilers the second they drop on Twitter. But on here, he's done a very curious thing and is not doing it. But just it's, know... It's difficult. I hope you all know yeah. what I go through for you people. And I'm going to say it's also going to be very difficult to me as the episode we talk about has, uh... Yeah, has some stuff. We're not going to say which one, but one of the episodes here is definitely a... Uh, huh! It's definitely a thinker <laughs> with the way things yeah, are currently. it's a real uh, chin scratcher, isn't it? Hmm. It's a real, like, oh, huh. yeah. Interesting. Very Interesting. So let's get into it. Today we're going to be talking about episodes 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Alright, Zen, let's get into it. Episode 6, After the Rain. Episode 6, Kaisen. Uh, Yuji is assumed dead, uh, but he is actually in his, uh, well, what he assumes is hell at the time, um, talking to Sukuna, and so he said that his... Uh, he has a really good line where he's like, damn, I'm stuck with you in hell, too. That sucks. <laughs> um, and they fight a little bit, but then Sukuna explains that, like, this is not, uh, this isn't hell. This is my innate, uh, my innate do- domain. We're not dead quite yet. Uh, and I want to make a deal with you. And if you accept my deal, I will bring us back to life. Uh, he wants the deal to be that if he utters a particular trigger phrase, he can automatically take over for one minute, and he will not injure anyone uh, within that one minute. Yuji refuses, and he says, no, you just bring me back to life now on no condition. Uh, Sukuna makes a deal, and he says, all right, why don't we fight, and whichever one of us wins will get their version. Yuji says yes, and immediately gets his head cut (laughs) off by Sukuna instantly. Uh, oh, and part of the g- agreement also was that Yuji would forget about the conversation. Uh, so he, he forgets about it after he loses. Um, we see Gojo sitting down in, like, the... Uh, what, what's that? What's the room where they put bodies? The morgue? Autopsy room. Morgue, yeah, in, like, a morgue with uh, Shoko Iori, the doctor, with the limousine man and himself. And he's angst in a bit about Yuji's death, and this is when he decides, you know, maybe I should have just murdered everyone. Um, because he kind of gives the explanation a bit of his background, that he wants to change the fundamental like foundation of Jujutsu society, and he can't do that by himself. But if he were to go and kill everyone, like people tend not to back up the person who commits mass murder. I think that's literally his justification, <laughs> is like people don't really like massacres that much. So, I shouldn't do that. Um, He's got a point. Yeah. And then uh, Shoko is moving to perform an autopsy on Yuji, and then Yuji gets up, and he's like, holy shit, my dick is out. 
Um, <laughs> Gojo is just like, okay, cool, and just high fives him, and he's like, all right. Uh, they decide they're going to start training him so he can defend himself better in the future without relying on Sukuna. And Gojo asks that they falsify the death record and say that he's dead so that nobody uh, will come after him while he's in training. Uh, Geto and the Cursed Spirit family are in like a cafe or like a diner or something, and they're hanging out, talking. And everyone's like, wow, it's really hot in here. What's going on with that weird monk guy sitting by himself? Because no one can see the Cursed Spirit family. Uh, they're talking about how they want to do their plan of becoming true humanity. Um, Jogo gets really excited uh, because he the, they talk about the prison realm, which is like a, a very rare cursed object, and he wants it. Uh, so he says, you know, he's gonna uh, he's gonna go kill Gojo himself, and then if he does that, he can just have the prison realm if they do that. So. Ghetto tells him it's a bad idea, but Gojo uh, Jogo gets all excited and he ends up burning everyone in the diner because he's it gets so hot because of how excited he is. Uh, Megami has a cute moment with the mother of the man that Yuji wanted to save that he said to leave behind because uh, he was like a shitty person that killed a little girl. He gives the mom his uh, name tag off of like his jacket, um, and the mom takes that with her. They go back and train for a little bit while Gojo is training Yuji to watch movies uh, while holding on to one of those little dolls that the, the principal makes. And every time he fucks up, like, flowing his cursed energy into the doll, um, the doll will punch him, basically. Gojo explains how cursed energy works, and he's like, yeah, you've got a cursed technique and then just raw cursed energy. Uh... We learned that curse techniques are innate. Uh, they're they're you're born with them basically. Yuji's sad to hear that, but Gojo's like, ah, it's cool. Uh, and he does a funny little reference thing where he he falls down and he's like, oh, I wanted to do like a kamehameha or a bankai or something. Dodanre. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and he's very sad about it. Oh, um, so sad. <laughs> yeah. And then Gojo is uh, off in the the limousine and he gets jumped by jogo uh and they begin to fight or they don't really begin to fight as much as they just kind of talk for a minute and they, they set up the fight for the next episode he comes um, crashing down after he tells the yeah uh, he like lands in the street and he's like ah let's go and then uh megami also learns that he can store stuff in his shadow in this episode which is a, an ability he makes use of frequently from this point forward hmm and then the Juju Stroll. The Juju Stroll. Uh, it is a like a, a TV show version of just like Gojo's day. And he's like going over to Yuji. He's like, oh, Yuji's watching his movies and he might be struggling. And he gives him advice. And the advice is like shitty. And it's like talking about, oh, yeah, you see a bunch of college <laughs> boys walking down the path, but they're they're taking up the whole path. And it like... Eventually, Yuji's like, can you just stop, please? This doesn't make any sense. <laughs> yeah, that was just pretty good. Uh, yeah, this one. Isn't it funny that both of the starting episodes for the two series we talk about feature a naked dude in it? Because Gintama has true. Kondo in... Uh, ton- why... Why am I blanking on his name right now? Hasegawa. Hasegawa. I wanted to call him Hijikata for some reason, but no, that's not it. There you go. Hasegawa, we're naked, and then this one, Yuji's naked. The only difference is that they don't put a sensor bar over his penis because they don't need to go that far. Yeah, because um, you can't see it. Yeah. Uh, I really like this one. It was, some, like I've said, a lot of like the early of bits starting of Jujutsu Kaisen kind of get lost in me probably because of the translation of how I was reading it and stuff. So it's kind of nice to see a refresher on a lot of this. Um, very cool to see stuff like him making the deal with him, Sukuno trying to weasel his way back into the living after killing him, which makes it seem like that was probably always his goal from the start was the second he was going to get back into control. He was going to kill him and then make this deal with him for some kind of motive that he would have later on in the future. Um, Whatever it may be. Uh, that's what I'm guessing, anyway. Could just be that he was equally <laughs> just ready to die. 
no one can truly know. Wes will find out in the future. Uh, I like the little fight he does with um, Eugene because he's very clearly very bored. <laughs> and he's just like kind of yeah, doing some... Yeah, he's just like, uh... Yeah. Like, the only time he gets him is when he punches the ground and says, like, ah, oh, I'm going for the ground, and it does not actually catch him off guard very often. No, it does nothing. No. He's not really interested in fighting him, which is pretty funny from the difference between this and when he was fighting uh, Megara, because he was, like, very clearly actually excited to kind of see what he does, and with usually he's just like, ah, whatever. <laughs> I don't care. I think you stink, to be honest, so I don't even want to give a try. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah that bit where he where he just like stops holding back and immediately kills him kind of shows that where i was like yeah he was clearly just like not interested in him whatsoever he's just a vessel that is holding him for the time being and isn't actually caring about his strength or anything else related to it which i thought was a uh, very cool and obviously when he comes back the immediately like <laughs> the way gojo goes from like pissed off going like i could just kill all those fuckers too Oh, yeah, you're back, Han. <laughs> Let's yeah, go. Yeah, just high five time. <laughs> yeah, they're just, they're just all about it. He's just like, yeah, welcome back to the living. <laughs> I thought that was good. Is this the one where they start? Yes, this is it. They start this gag of um, Panda just constantly throing around. Um, no, uh, Yeah, this is where it starts because later on it like... <laughs> They cut to him, I think Megami's showing up, and he's just like, what's going on? And then they have, like, Panda, and he's just, like, uh, tossing around <laughs> no- Nobara, and um, just uh, tossing her left and side. He's like, oh, we're training, like, how to fight close up, because we're not very good at it. Uh, and he's still doing this five episodes later. <laughs> it made me laugh when I saw, like, five episodes later when he cuts back to them, and he's still fucking doing this, and she's still going, oh, oh. <laughs> Yeah, every time she's just like, uh, and he just throws her. <laughs> very funny. Uh, very good to see him going out there. I enjoyed that, and I also really liked him watching the movies. Um, I can't remember if it's this episode or the next one of they start showing what movies he's watching. I think they show one or two here. I think the first is the action movie with the red and the blue wire. Yes. And uh, that one was pretty funny because he's getting really into the movies and then he's immediately getting punched. Uh, and then later on, he's watching a movie. I can't remember if it's this one or the next episode, but he's watching a movie and it's very clearly Lord of the Rings. <laughs> because they have Sam and Frodo and they're talking about like, I can't let you go, Mr. Frodo. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Um and yeah, and I like the also explanation of them trying to talk about, like, how does the curse stuff actually work? Because this is the stuff where I started getting confused between the translations and, like, not fully really getting it. But it was nice to kind of actually have a better, like, showing and be like, oh, this is how it works. I'm like, oh, that's how it's worked this entire time. Because I've been going through a lot of this, just not fully grasping it, but just going like, okay, curse stuff is happening there's techniques, and then there's something else. All right, I think that's enough. I think I got it from here. Let's go. <laughs> and I'm caught up in the manga, and that's how I've just accepted a lot of the curse stuff that happens. But it's nice to go back and be like, oh, okay. This makes a little... Now it makes a little bit more sense to me as I get it filled out in my brain <laughs> to remember it. And yeah, and I like that end bit of um, Gojo getting ready to fight. Uh, the Man, What this, their names are so similar. Yeah, Gojo and Jogo. Yeah, Gojo oh. and Jogo. Go, go. God damn it. <laughs> They're getting ready for a go fight. <laughs> Gonna have a go off. So yeah, I thought it was a very good episode. How'd you feel about it, Zen? Uh, really good. I like the bit with Sukuna and Yuji in the beginning. Uh, I like Megami kind of doing the nice little thing for the mom, even though he said, like, fuck, that guy sucks. We don't have to care about him. He still brought the thing back for the mom because he's a he's a nice boy at heart. Mm. Uh, and yeah, the arrival of Jogo, getting to see Gojo begin to start fighting is very cool. Yes, because this is when I think th- this the next episode that comes up is the one where I went from I really like Jujutsu Kaisen to holy shit this manga, mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and it comes with him actually starting the fight. 
So I'm very excited to go for there. And also the the Juju Stroll is very cute as well. I, again, I'm enjoying all the Gojo good, and seeing him again. It's very cool. He's a very cool yeah, character. Yeah, just like, oh my god, he's here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's I for- around. He's around. I completely forgot a lot of uh, the early bits as well. Because I remember really liking him from the jump. It's kind of hard not to like him. There's only one person in the entire world who doesn't like Gojo, and it is the creator of Jujutsu Kaisen who absolutely fucking yep. hates him. <laughs> <laughs> fucking hates him. Absolutely it's mauls. It's really funny. It is really funny, because I don't know why he makes him so cool and so funny, and he's like, no, he's none of those things, he sucks. Yeah, he's like, no, you're supposed to hate him, and it's like, how? How? How are you supposed to hate him? So it's even funnier if you consider all the little antics that he does as the uh, the author trying to get you to hate him. It just doesn't work. It just makes yeah, you like, like him. every single time he tries, it's like, oh no, it's actually, everyone loves him. It's like, oh I love all the memes of uh, it being like, you know, he's just sitting there fucking malding right now <laughs> because everyone's talking about how awesome Gojo is. One hundred percent. He's one of the ones who's like, it's really fun. It's maybe the funniest case of an author hating someone so popular that I've heard since the creator of Sherlock Holmes not liking Sherlock Holmes very much. Yes, which is also really funny. Yes, anytime it happens, it's really funny. It just shows how you can't control what an audience cares about. <laughs> they care about this man, and damn it, this man is something else. So yeah, very cool episode. I like the good introduction for the the villain dudes is to show them that they're just like cold-blooded, cursed dudes. Ah, man. Alright, let's go on to the next episode, shall we? So we have Assault Episode Seven. So thank God for all. After going from Gintama, who are like, who was who like soy sauce is a good uh, flotation device, and then going to here, where it's just like a single <laughs> word. <laughs> it's pretty nice. It is nice. Uh, so this one, we start the fight between Gojo and Jogo. Jogo thinks like, ah, oh, I'm the best. I blasted this dude with fire. Easy, easy. Uh, and then. You see Gojo just standing there, and uh, Jogo's attack is, like, falling off. Uh, he keeps attacking him, and it's not working, and he doesn't get it. And then we get an explanation from Gojo about how the Limitless technique works, and what, like, the Infinity is. Uh, it's basically that every time you get close to him, the distance between you and him increases, so you can never actually touch him. Uh... Gojo then begins to beat the absolute piss out of Joko for a while, just absolutely destroying him. Uh, he decides that he's going to go grab Yuji to watch because he thinks this is a fantastic learning experience. Uh, he brings him over because he can teleport, and Yuji's like, what the fuck? <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> uh, Jogo uses a domain expansion, and Gojo immediately wipes it out with his own. And we learn a little bit more about what domain expansion is because we've seen Sukuna use it before, but there wasn't really much of an explanation. We just kind of saw it happen. Uh, in this one, Gojo explains what they are, how they work, and how a sorcerer that is sufficiently strong enough can overwhelm their opponent's domain by using their own. Uh, Gojo then rips um, Jogo's head off, and he's like, all right, I'm going to leave your head so that I can interrogate you before I kill you. Uh, but then Hanami arrives and saves him at the last minute by throwing down these little flowers that make them like not want to fight. And then summoning a monster, Yuji, in what is a very good line. He's like, I'll take care of this one, uh, Sensei, you go get the guy. And then the monster grabs him, he's like, wait, no, help me. <laughs> <laughs> Please help me. Uh, and so they save him. And then... Uh, Geto walks in there and starts talking to the other member of the cursed family, which is uh, Mahito. And Hanami arrives with Jogo's head, and he's like, oh, okay, so now you understand that you absolutely cannot defeat Gojo. I'm glad you didn't die. So now we're going to go ahead with my plan, which is to seal Gojo away in the prison realm. And then we have the Juju Stroll, which is Geto and Mahito uh, exercising near the severed head. And then they start playing soccer with it, as a soccer <laughs> with using him as the soccer ball. Yep. Um, and eventually he he scores a goal. Mahito scores a goal using Jogo's head past Hanami, who is the goalkeeper. Yep. 
And I think this is another... I'm going to assume it is, because they always do it. It's another Captain Tsubasa reference. When he goes for the kick, I want to say. Yes, the the technique he does when he's doing the kick. That's Captain Tsubasa's kick. <laughs> Pretty good. Uh, yeah, this episode. This one was fantastic. The this is where we start to see a lot of the, like the big fights, um, where a lot of the fancy, beautiful animation starts to get put into play. Um, like when uh, oh God, I keep that. Uh, fuck, what is his name? Gogo. Go. I, it's gonna be really confusing. Gogo. Go-Go? Okay, I'm gonna go. Jogo Go-Go. is the monster. Gojo is the person. Gojo and Gogo. Jo- man. No. Anyway, Monster Man, the volcano head, <laughs> starts shooting off volcanoes, <laughs> and he's actually really strong. I actually completely forgot this because I remember that this fight, that he completely, like, trivializes him. But up until this point, they had like, been building him up to be extremely strong. Like, I think he said that at one point, how strong am I compared to how many fingers? And I think he said, you're about eight or nine fingers strong. So he's very strong. Um, and when he shoots him with, like the fire it takes up like an entire uh it like goes from across the street it's like a huge blast so he's very a very good blast he's like hitting him with like multiple like different techniques like ones that they explode but also attack with sound he's like hitting him with everything but it just doesn't matter because his ability that he has uh infinity is just like too strong and he'll never actually be able to hit him i also remember when i first read this going how does anyone beat this guy? <laughs> yes. Because it kind of feels... Power is super broken. It is unbelievable levels of broken. It's crazy strong. This is the part where we said like the difference between Gojo and Kakashi is that Kakashi gets built up, but then he loses. Gojo gets built up, and his, like, he's like a movie villain. <laughs> he's a monster. Yeah, it's it becomes more apparent later on, but there's a really good uh, manga chapter that hasn't been adapted into the anime yet, where Gojo is fighting, and they straight up just depict him as like a monster, like he's constantly in black silhouette, and like his eyes are all lit up and shit. It looks so cool. Yeah, you can definitely feel that the way he's just like completely like no selling what this guy can do. He knows for a fact that they are not on the same level at all, and it's also pretty nice because he they, he's been worn. Like, he's been constantly told that, like, you should not try and fight Gojo. Um, it's a really bad idea. Like, you'll die trying. We have a chance that we seal him, maybe. But if you actually try and kill him, that's just not happening. <laughs> that's That seems, like, not plausible. Um, so that's your best kind of course of action. And, of course, this guy doesn't take him very seriously because he assumes that he's just so strong he's not going to be able to do it. So... It was cool seeing that. It was really funny that he just decided in the middle of it, he was like, this would be a very good learning experience, let's go. And he was right, because he was able to teach him about domain stuff, um, which is also great, because then this is uh, another case where you get to actually see his face. And when he does his face, he does the infinite, and this is also the start of domains whose powers are, like, crazy beyond what you would expect. <laughs> because, his, like, the way he beats him is, like, you're just going to stare into the infinite forever and you're gonna be like so paralyzed with things that you could do you just won't do anything yeah basically like you you become so flooded because you gain like all the the knowledge and like everything about existence basically floods your brain at one time and it just overloads you and you freeze and you just shut down yeah which is very good very strong also like the little animation when he does the head rip yes very cool very good and yeah, uh, it was also nice to also see some of the other dudes here, the other dudes in the Curse family. Uh, I remember one of them because the second I saw him, I said, oh, no, it's this guy again. <laughs> and I immediately yes. all him. the all him and then all the memories came flooding back to me and I went, oh, no, because this is um this is around the part where it's a lot of my favorite stuff where I feel like, oh, yeah, this is the this this is where you could really feel the steamroll heading forward. And it was just like a lot of good stuff back to back to back to back. Uh, and it definitely you can definitely feel it, especially with this fight between them, which is just it's it's a, it's beautiful to read in manga form and to see in anime form. Oh, just done so well. <laughs> So unbelievably well 
that it makes me happy that it got such a well done uh, anime adaptation because it really does do justice to the uh, to the manga. And yeah, that's how I feel about it. Zen, how do you feel? Uh, fantastic episode. I love the the Gojo beatdown. It's one of my favorite, just absolute anime ass beatings. Uh, it's so good. Uh, I really like the Yuji gag where he's like trying to contribute and he cannot at all. <laughs> and Gojo <laughs> has to come back and help him. Um, and yeah, the Mahito introduction is also creepy because Mahito's creepy. He's a little fucking freak. Yeah, Hate that guy. Yeah, one hundred percent. There's, I feel like there's a true, the truly best villains are the one that make you go, I "Fucking hate this guy." <laughs> fucking. Mm-hmm. I would. The only other ones that are exceptional are the ones that you make you go, uh, "Look at this fucking guy. I love him." Which is the Dio tier, and then I feel like yes. there's his tier that just to look at them make you go, "This fucking guy." <laughs> like to the point where if anyone ever told me this is their favorite character, I just would not trust them. I would, yeah, <laughs> I'm like you're there's something wrong with you. Yeah, if, it, if my those your favorite character. Yeah, it's like the the remember the handshake meme where it says like, "Oh, you love Jujutsu Kaisen? Who's your favorite character?" and they say this guy's name. I'm immediately washing my hands. Yeah, no washing <laughs> your hands of them for good. Yeah. Yeah, forever <laughs> after that. Absolutely. 100% so yeah, the fucking great episode. <laughs> Man. Yeah, it's uh, a phenomenal episode. Yes. Yes. And let's continue on forward as we go on to... Also, the 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 scroll was also very good. I even don't remember a lot of these strolls, or it's just been so long since I've seen them. Every single one of these has just been fantastic ways to kind of end episodes. They're so good. I love the Juju strolls. Yes, they're really good. They're really even with them using their their new villain dudes. It was mm-hmm. very uh cute and funny and well done. And seeing them play soccer with his head is very funny. There's like a specific attitude that is in Jujutsu Kaisen which is very nice. Um it it reminds me because back in the day there was a lot of talk about how Jujutsu Kaisen and Chainsaw Man are basically the same. Which, at the time, I was like, I don't really see it. I don't really see how they're that similar. But I guess if you boiled it down to like just the basics, there's a lot of things that are very similar about the two. And at that point, I was like, I guess they are kind of similar. But then after actually watching the adaptation of Chainsaw Man and then seeing the Jujutsu Kaisen one, they're completely different. <laughs> Those people were out of their fucking minds. Yeah, they're completely different. Yeah, just the the way that they handle stuff and the way that they approach things are completely different. You should just learn to have two good things and not compare them all the time. Yeah, not, yeah, just have multiple really good things instead of trying to decide which one is better between these two good things. Yeah, exactly. Just fucking enjoy it, my guy. <laughs> just do it. And speaking of enjoying things, episode eight, boring, where we meet another very good... This is why I'm saying there were so many good back-to-back dudes. Oh, also, I forgot. Is this... No, this, this, this is the episode where they mentioned them. Never mind, it's fine. Um... Another great character gets introduced here <laughs> that I really yes. like. Everyone loves this guy. He's a very popular character. Yep. Uh, so we have the introduction of uh, Toto and also Mai, who is Maki's sister, because we see them uh, appear on the Tokyo grounds and uh, they kind of are shitheads. Mai is a is an asshole, obviously. Uh, Toto says he doesn't give a shit about any of the stuff that they're talking about. All he wants to know um, is if they'll be interesting at all because they're replacing Yuta, who he wanted to fight because Yuta's not going to compete in this contest that they're in. Uh, he wants to determine if they're interesting or not by asking what kind of women that they like. Um, Megami gives... Uh, a decent answer for like the women's perspective. Like they're both like, oh, that was pretty good. But Toto hates it because <laughs> he says <laughs> he, he thinks it's a terrible, boring answer. And then he's like, my preferred version is a tall woman with a big butt. And he starts beating the <laughs> shit out of Megami <laughs> for having a bad answer. Um, the ultimate Nobra vibe check. Help. Yeah, <laughs> Nobra goes to help, but she's grabbed by Mai, uh, who doesn't want her to. Um. Megami recognizes Toto's name as somebody from the 
uh, parade of a thousand or a hundred demons or a thousand demons or whatever it is. Um, hundred demons. The night, the yeah. night line of a hundred. The night parade of yeah of a hundred demons. Um, My favorite Disneyland parade. <laughs> it's right it's up really there. a thing that happens in Jujutsu Kaisen. It's it's in the movie. Oh damn it! That, that's where this fucking. Thing, I was so confused when they brought this up. I was like, when the fuck did this happen? I don't remember it. We need to really. When the series is done, I can't wait to see that movie. Yeah, it's it's in the movie. Um, so Megami's trying to continue to fight him, and it's not working at all. He's getting uh, fucking blasted before he eventually gets saved by Panda and uh, Inumaki, who frees him in place. Uh, and then we see uh, Gojo meeting with the principal, and he's just being an asshole to him the whole time. And then uh, Miwa, the principal's attendant, is like, you can't talk that way. I'll get you arrested. But then in her head, she's like, oh, my fucking God, he's so cool. <laughs> uh, <laughs> then we catch up with Yuji. Um, and we see that he is going on a mission with uh, Nanami. And then we see the... Uh, I, oh yeah, no. This, in this episode, she does get the selfie. She runs after Gojo to get a selfie with him. Uh, Miwa does, mm-hmm. and then she does end up getting the selfie. Um, and then we have the Juju stroll, which is Toto and Mai together. And Toto is at this show for this idol that he really likes, like this the pop idol girl. And he makes Mai go and shake her hand as well. And then he's like, "So, you know, what do you think? Wasn't it great?" And she's like, "Okay, it was pretty nice." <laughs> she like, also liked it yeah he's like i know it's hard to put into words <laughs> the, the fact that she has on your the kind of chan has on your life <laughs> it's immense uh-huh. oh man yes this is another fantastic fucking banger after banger episode <laughs> this one's really good um obviously that's hard to not oh well first of all i just wanted to bring it up they actually do bring up the they talk about the third year and i was like oh yeah it reminded us previously it was like the guy who shows up many chapters later i had completely forgot that he was chapters later. yeah i forgot that he was mentioned this early on and it's also that other guy that you told me that was also in the prequel that i just completely was like i guess those are just two dudes and i just continued reading <laughs> Yeah, Yuta is the protagonist of the prequel. Yeah, it's funny how I looked at both of those dudes, saw them back then, and I said, like, oh, those are two good, those are two dudes, and just completely forgot when they showed up again. <laughs> Shows a little bit of how, how attention spanned I am sometimes when reading. Um, but yeah, then shows up a lot of these. Uh, so, my favorite thing in any series at all is a very well put together system that is magical in origins and one of the best things that you can be in there is a man who can just throw hands i think that is the best thing you can hope for is a person who completely ignores all of that and is just really good (laughs) at throwing hands and suplexing dudes left and right yeah, he suplexes the shit out of Megami in this fight. He does. It's a really good suplex. Um, I love that character type. I think there's never not a character like that that I don't like. Like, you would have to make that character actively terrible on purpose for me not to like them. Because I just like that concept in general. And him showing up with like his huge-ass muscles just 100% beating the shit out of this guy. <laughs> it's fucking great. Loved it. Loved every second of it. Um, his introduction is obviously amazing. When he says it, what he says, I, he's a man with conviction. You can feel that he definitely loves that type of woman. Even down to the fact that his idol is a very specific idol of like she's one of the tall ones. Like they mentioned, like when he brings her up her name, he's like, "It's a tall idol." <laughs> <laughs> which is really funny which is really good um i would imagine it'd be very easy to make a character like this like <laughs> it's very easy to think of like the flirting versus harassment meme of a character saying yes. exactly what he says and he coming off creepy <laughs> but just the way he delivers it and with such conviction and you could just tell that he 100 agree- percent like feels this <laughs> that 
it just makes you love the guy no matter what and it makes you even love him ever even more when he like <laughs> when Meg- megami gives his answer of like a woman with just a very good personality and i don't care about anything else and the other two obviously loving his answer like even though we're saying like if you if you said a woman with <laughs> huge boobs i would have been i would have hit you <laughs> right on the spot <laughs> But then his response is just like crying, and you think like, "Oh, maybe he was moved by it." Nah, he was moved to tears. He hated it. <laughs> it fucking hated it so much that it made him cry so much. He was <laughs> bored out of his mind. He's like, "I really was hoping to like b- become buddy buddy with you, but I can't be buddy buddy with a man who only loves a woman for her personality." <laughs> <laughs> I need someone who can tell me their exact fetish. Your fetish tells me nothing about you but that you're boring. <laughs> Which is very good. Amazing. Love him. And obviously the fight scene between them is great. I also like the end where it seemed like he was about to get just a little bit more serious. Like something was about to start popping off. But then of course Panda and Salmon come in and stop him. <laughs> Before that There's they also can... the origin of the shit yourself meme with him. Oh, is it? Is this where this yeah. comes from? Yeah. Yeah, because his power is whatever he says you have to do, right? Yeah, whatever he says, when when you hear it, it you you do it automatically. Yeah, yeah, so that would make sense that... It's a powerful ability. Honestly, if he had said it, then I feel like that would have been game over for him. Uh-huh. Especially because he would have been so devastated because he wouldn't have been able to go to beat his... He would have to have changed his pants. He wouldn't have been able to before, see his... Yeah, before he could go meet his, uh, his idol. Yeah, because he seems like the kind of guy who would never go to an idol. Like, obviously, a lot of people, when you think of the person who goes to an idol, you think, like, oh, they're dirty. But no, I think he has too much respect for her that he would never dare to show up with shit in his pants. <laughs> yeah, and I also like the the stuff with... Um, my sister and no, uh, no, Nobra as well, because we actually hear, I think later on she says in the previous episode, the one where she was getting twirled around by Panda, that she wanted to buy an outfit specifically for track meets. And then she has the outfit in this episode. And then by the end of it, it gets holes in it. And she's very pissed off that her outfit has been yeah, messed it's with. ruined immediately. <laughs> and she tells, um, she tells her, I need you to leave behind your clothes. <laughs> Do it now. <laughs> yeah. Leave your outfit leave your outfit and then she starts complaining about like your your thighs are too big for the outfit anyway <laughs> would it even fit you it just makes her even more ad more pissed yeah. uh and i thought that was a very good interaction between them also like that uh, my weapon is just a gun <laughs> she yeah, pulls out a gun. a gun it's a very strong weapon very good um, I like when Gojo's talking to the principal because he shows up and immediately says like, oh, I told the, cause he was supposed the, uh, the other principal, the old man principal was supposed to be like meeting the other one, but Gojo on purpose gave him the wrong start time. <laughs> yeah. So he's not, he's not going to be showing up. And I like that. it's bat- like an obnoxiously long time away too. Yeah. He says like, after he's done talking, he was like, he'll be here in two to three hours, by the way. Bye bye. <laughs> Fucking troll. <laughs> <laughs> so unbelievable yeah i like the conversation where he's talking about like oh isn't it exciting like the idea like you've been trying to keep all the cursed energies in like the square box for so long and now it's finally coming out he's like basically there to gloat saying like oh yeah all the shit that you've been trying to hold off it's all coming apart now i just want you to know that old man and the old man's just like i need you to fucking watch your tone he's like oh yeah whatever whatever we're fine um and then he leaves him off um Still hiding the fact that uh, uh, Yuji is still alive, so he doesn't want him to know about that. I think his original plan is, uh, uh, we mentioned last episode, he told him that his plan was for him to meet up at this, uh, the cross meet that they're going to be having. Like, him show up there, and not until he's actually strong enough to defend himself against whatever nonsense that this old man and others like him would want to try and do to him. So that was cool. And of course, I really like that girl who um, is just a big Gojo fan. Because she tries to be, like, strict with him, and then, like, inside her mind, she's just like, oh, yeah, he's fucking awesome. He's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> uh, which is really good. And I did like that selfie, because at the end, when uh, she comes back, <laughs> she she resolves herself, and she completely forgot that she was supposed to get the tea. And then there's, like a, like, a couple, like, five seconds of complete silence, and then the old man goes like, tea? <laughs> He says, like, in the... Yeah, he's like, can I have my tea? <laughs> Where is it? She's like, oh my god, I forgot. 
That's great. I also like the setup of what Yuji's doing because they do a really good like um uh they do it like kind of like a cold case file saying like these following dudes were found in this state. And, uh, and they were really fucked up. Like, they're just, like, their yes, heads are, like... Super fucked up. Borderline, like, body horror type shit. Horrifying to look at. So, can't wait to see more of that. And, yeah, this is another fantastic episode. I also really like it when they go to go see the idol. Like, the whole reason that he also wanted to stop fighting, he told Mai, is that we need to go see my idol. <laughs> it's really funny. And then we also see him meet his idol. And it's so funny, because he goes, like... I would just really like the Takata-chan beam. And she gives him the beam, and he's like, oh. And then the guy goes like, it's sir, your time is over. <laughs> yeah. He's like, all right, you gotta get out. Yeah, you gotta get out. Which is really funny, because it actually did remind me of the old Yakuza minigame where you had to do these meet and greets. Because <laughs> uh, there's an idol minigame, obviously, because it's Yakuza. The series of Yakuza, you would expect there to be a... Uh, a mini game in which you play as a pop idol, uh, and they do uh, a mini game where you have to actually greet fans and like give them handshake, like the handshake meeting and stuff like that. So it was cool to see that. I never actually st- thought of a handshake meeting as being a real thing, and then I was like, oh, I guess yes, I guess this would be based off of actual things that idols do in Japan. <laughs> I just never really thought about it. It's weird to think about. I wonder how COVID worked for them. I guess they would have to just be super like video meetings yeah v- a video handshake that's why the vtubers are here zen you don't need to do a hand <laughs> <laughs> no hands to shake there you just need to see the anime women and it's perfectly fine <laughs> it's the final form anyway another great episode really good i also like the the stroll everything about it really good good setup for the next one great stuff how do you feel zen uh really good really good stuff the ending is my favorite part where it sets up like the creepy little mini arc that we're about to go into mm. uh but i really like toto too so his introduction was really good <laughs> yes very good man man this is just kaizen is just so good zen uh-huh <laughs> it really is it really is uh, episode nine let's go young fish and reverse punishments the longest title so far Go ahead, son. Uh, so this one, we see this kid uh, getting bullied at school, and people treat him like shit, and he's getting all, all fucked up or whatever. Um, and he says something that's like, "Oh, you know, if I could press a button that would make everyone I hated die, I wouldn't do it. But if I could press a button that made everyone who hated me die, I totally would do it." Um, at a movie theater later on. Um, his bullies are there as well. And then Mahito is there and he kills the bullies for being annoying while he's watching the movie. And we see his cursed technique the first time he uses it. Um, the uh, cops call the sorcerers in and we see that it is Yuji and Nanami who we saw going outside the theater in, like, the, the ending of the last episode. Um, we see a little bit of flashback where as to, like, how they ended up getting together, and we see that Gojo um, put them both together, and Nanami uh, is, like, the exact opposite of Gojo, where he's, like, a very much a rules man, and he's, like, kind of straight-laced, like, businessman kind of guy. Uh, he does the famous... Uh, work is shit, so I came back. I, I left being a Jujutsu Sorcerer because Jujutsu Sorcerers are shit. But then I decided to come back and be one instead of go to work because working is also shit. <laughs> so I just am going to do this instead. Um, he says that he does not respect Yuji at the moment, but he is willing to help Gojo because he trusts him. Um, Yuji's like, I don't want you to. I don't want you to look down on me. I want you to consider me part of the team. And then Nanami's like, you know, you're you're still a kid, and I'm an adult. So no matter what happens, like, I it's my job to make sure that you're okay because you're still a child. So, uh, they get attacked by some kind of creepy monster things, and they fight. And he explains how his curse technique works. While Yuji is fighting his own opponent, he Nanami absolutely obliterates his guy extremely quickly. Um, 
Yuji eventually beats his own, and he uses his new ability, the Divergent Fist, which is, uh, he, he punches you physically first, and then the wave of cursed energy hits you afterward, like when you're no longer blocking, basically. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nanami is like, oh, that's pretty cool, I like you, kid, we're, we're starting to get along. And then we see Junpei, uh, who is the bullied young boy, uh, starting to learn about, like, the curse world, basically, from uh, Mahito. Um, we learn that those things that they killed were not curses. They're fucked up, mutated people, which really pisses Yuji off. It makes him very angry. Uh, and then they learn a little bit about how they need to chase down this... They call him uh, uh, the, the patchwork face, I think is what they call him, the curse with a patchwork face. Um, and then Mahito is explaining that curses basically come from humans or whatever. Um, and that Mahito himself was is basically the curse of uh, human hatred for other people. He's, he's like the curse of human loathing, more or less. Um Eventually, Yuji and the limousine man find Junpei, who is the survivor of the theater massacre, and they want to go uh, interview him, and then the episode ends, and we see that it's just uh, Gojo fucking with Nanami the whole time is what it is. He's <laughs> like, hey, you want to hang out? And Nanami's like, no, I don't want to hang out. Um, and he's like, come on, man, let's hang out. It's just really important, okay? Um and he won't hang out with him no matter what. So he's like, all right, fine, here, just read this, and I'll go. And he hands him a piece of paper, and Nanami opens up the letter to read it, and it's just a little drawing that says <laughs> penis. <laughs> it's really funny. It is really funny. There's no... It's. Mm, I really do like their dynamic going back and forth. It's really funny. So, this episode. So, Nanami... Funny enough, is actually my favorite character from Jujutsu Kaisen. <laughs> Absolutely, really? okay. yes, he yeah, is he's my favorite. I do, I do really like him. Yeah, he's my favorite, um, and it's I think specifically because there's a lot of reasons to like him, but I definitely like him in this arc that we're about to get, and his stuff with uh, Mahito as he's fighting him is really good, and the kind of back and forth that they have. But in general, I really like his like attitude. And the way he approaches stuff, and the way he fights as well, um, the way he carries himself, the way he looks, like, the way he dresses. Like, I can't think of anything that I don't, like, I could not give you a negative about him, basically. It's like, everything I like, uh, everything about him I like, and he's and he ends up being my favorite Jujutsu Kaisen character. Um, I even like the little thing that he beats people with, which is like the, a sword wrapped up and like on the <laughs> by the the cursed by the dull edge of it, so it's not even supposed to kill, but he's able to kill him and stuff like that. Um, so it was really great to kind of see him uh, again and see him in this episode and see his debut because it's been a while since I've seen the debut of him um, because obviously we're super deep into the manga at this point. So yeah, it was cool to see him. Um, I like his introduction. I like the back and forth that he has with Gojo, because he's the exact opposite, like you said. <laughs> he's... If Gojo is, like, some kind of, like, laughing... You know how there's two sides of the play, where it's one is the 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 smiling face and the other one is the sad face? He's basically the sad face to his smiling face. Yes. Uh, I also like how different he is is, 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 with his approach to Yuji, because he's treating him very much like, no, this is fucked up, you're still a kid, I don't care if you're, if you're, I don't care if you're able to do all this, it's an adult's job to actually take care of kids, even if you don't, even if you don't want my protection, it's still gonna be given to you no matter what, and you can see that he's true to his words, because when it comes time to actually track down, uh, Mahito, he specifically gives him an operation that would put him out of harm's way, basically. Uh, so he can actually do it himself, because he doesn't actually think that... Um, he doesn't want him to deal with him. He knows that this guy is bad. Whatever the fuck he's doing, it's really bad. And the anyone that can have a curse technique that turns humans into basically 
these monster things is not someone that you would actually want a kid to fight in any capacity. And I think he's right on that. (laughs) He's he's 100% on the money on this. So this episode was a great introduction to him. Um, I also like Junpei's um, stuff here where he's just constantly getting bullied. He gets a lot of bullied. I forget how much this kid just goes through. Um, to kind of push him on one side uh, with Mahito and stuff like that. But he really does go through a lot. And I think it's important to kind of set up how he ends up being for future episodes and stuff like that. And yeah, I really like the fighting. I like seeing his... I don't think he ever explained how his curse technique worked when he first (laughs) showed up. I don't remember that when he first showed up. So it was actually kind of nice to see it. And also that his... uh, uh, technique is kind of based off of a nine to five. <laughs> yeah, well, I think the nine to five bit uh, comes out in the next episode. It, it does, but it, in here you can kind of hear when he's talking about the specific dimensions. It also comes out to being related to that as well. So it's uh, it's cool either way. And yeah, this is a really good episode. Really fucked up body horror stuff in this one as well. Yeah, what I remember. Uh, Jujutsu Kaisen really knows how to be creepy when it wants to be, and this episode's really good at that. Yeah, that's why it was kind of awesome having this one and eventually Chainsaw Man back to back because I just got my daily dose of just like fucked up <laughs> bo- body yeah, horror and fucked in- up nightmare shit. Yeah, which is like I felt was missing for so long. We had, for a brief moment we had returned to the glorious Kinshiro punches a guy and he turns into like a giant body horror mess and explodes all over the place full of blood. <laughs> we had returned to that era for just a brief moment and it was glorious. And yeah, that's how I feel about this episode. How do you f- I also like the name of the episode of not the episode, the name of the movie that the, he goes to go see Human Earthworm 3. <laughs> Yes, the human earthworm. It's really funny. Yeah, really good. Um, that's how I feel. How do you feel about Zen? Uh, it's really good. Uh, the whole episode's really good. I thought the like the investigation at the movie theater was super creepy. I love when Jujutsu Kaisen gets like gross and nasty. Um, it had good, good like detective vibes, and it sets up the next episode really well because I think the next episode is super cool. I agree. And we are going to get into that episode right now. No. Yes, right now, right now I've decided we're going to talk about episode 10, Idol Transfiguration. Go ahead, Zen. So we see some more stuff about uh, Junpei. He's getting his ass beat because he has just the shittiest like, life. Um Junpei and Mahito are kind of like bonding a little bit and they're like learning about stuff and he's showing Junpei his experimentation he's been doing with his curse technique uh, and Junpei is like, I, I don't care. Uh, and he, J- Mahito expects it to freak him out because he's like, wow, those are humans, but it doesn't at all because Junpei is just too, uh, what's the word, cynical. He's just too like jaded. He doesn't give a shit anymore. Um Yuji and Limousine Man uh, catch up with him. And uh, they kind of decide they're going to go after him because they want to use these little curse spirits to like test and see if uh, he he is the sorcerer that killed them. Because if he uses a technique to kill them, then they'll know. And then we see Nanami sneak into the underground like bunker sewer that Mahito's been hiding out in. Um, they fight, and Nanami kind of is like, I don't really like killing people regardless. Even if they're too fucked up, it's not my favorite thing to do. Um, and then Mahito's like, oh, good. You're not as strong as Gojo, so I can actually test my my abilities on you, because you're, you're strong enough to fight. Uh, they fight quickly, and Nanami says, I don't really want to go into overtime, so let's just fight and get it over with, please. Um... They fight a little bit, and Nanami is like, this guy is very similar to Gojo in that they're just, like, childlike assholes, and then at any moment, they can just absolutely kill you <laughs> if they wanted to. Um, Mahito is talking, he's speaking English, which is rare for a curse. He has to be very strong for the ability to do that. So Nanami puts together that it's probably connected to the one that attacked uh, Gojo on the street, 
they talk, they kind of wax poetic about the soul, and that's when Mahito reveals that the soul is how his curse technique works, that he uh, connects the soul, and then the soul shapes the body. Um, his technique is idle transfiguration that allows him to do the stuff that he does to people's bodies when he, like, mutates them and makes them all creepy. Um, Junpei bumps into a teacher outside of his school, and we cut back to him, and the teacher's, like, um, giving him shit. Hey, like, you're, you're gonna, you need to be doing better, coming into school more and shit. Uh, and then Yuji pants the guy, and then steals his pants, and then runs. <laughs> and so the guy starts chasing him down to get his pants back. But Yuji's in, like extremely fast, so he outruns the guy, so that Yuji and uh, Junpei can talk. And uh, then we cut back to Nanami and Mahito's battle, and they're fighting. And uh, Mahito tries to use Idol Transfiguration on him to change his soul, but he manages to sort of accidentally protect his own soul with his cursed energy. Um, so it hurt him, but it didn't transform him. And then Mahito's like, okay, I just gotta hit you a few times then, because that way you, you can't block it forever. Um, Nanami runs away until Overtime begins, and then he reveals that, in fact, uh, Overtime is an ability of his. And whenever he's forced to work past the normal closing time, he gets a massive boost in uh, his cursed energy. And then we go to the Juju Stroll, which is Nobara trying to find her school uniform, and she can't find it. Uh, <laughs> and she says, hey, Panda, do you know where my uniform is? And then he turns around, obviously wearing her jacket, and he goes, no. <laughs> Don't know where it is. <laughs> um, so she beats him up and takes her coat back, and then uh, Toge jumps into the room, and he's like, aha, I'm wearing a skirt, and she beats him up immediately. And then realizes that it's not her skirt, and he's wearing Maki's skirt. A skirt. <laughs> and she's like, well, where the hell's my skirt? And then uh, Gojo is wearing it, and making a joke is him, and Yuji are laughing about it. Yeah, he just goes, I'm over. <laughs> Does a peace <laughs> line. I was like, oh my god, fucking <laughs> troll. No matter what. It's really funny to see him, because he just, just kind of pop out of nowhere. I also really did like when he shows up and he goes... Because he says one of the ingredients, I forget what he says. I think he says like pickle seaweed, and then she shows up, immediately beats his ass and he, as he's falling down. He goes salmon roe. Uh, <laughs> really good, really good end bit. Um, yeah, this episode is also another amazing episode. Obviously, I like all the fight between uh, Nanami and uh, Maito. I really like the moment where. Um, Maido starts talking about like what comes first, the soul versus the body, and manipulating and all this other kind of stuff. And at one point, the thing that he had been manipulating, he starts speaking in a very weird scientific way. He's like, oh yeah, sometimes these things leak. And he's not treating it as like it's crying, but it's very clearly crying because he's saying like, help me. And then he has like, uh, Nanami has like a flashback of talking to the morgue lady and she says like, listen... If you see one of these things, there's no helping them. They're basically dead. It's actually a mercy to kill them. Uh, just because there's no way to live a life like this. So if you see anything like that, the best way you can help them is to just kind of end their life and be done with it. And he, of course, wipes away the tears from it. And I think he's saying, like, oh, I'm very calm. And then uh, Mahito says, like, you're lying. I can actively feel your soul shaking. <laughs> Which is very cool. Uh, I like the bit where Yuji is failing to try because both of him and the limo man are like having up coming up with this plan. It's a very simple plan. All he needs to see is check to see whether or not he can see it. But because the principal was there, their plan got disarrayed, but it didn't stop the um, the limousine man from already opening the cage to let him out. <laughs> So their plan did not go off 100%, but it worked out pretty fine. I also like Yuji pantsing this teacher because this, pe this teacher fucking sucks. We've seen him in the previous episode that he watched him get bullied and he didn't do anything to try and stop it. And then when he comes to his house and he says, like, oh, you know, the three that are dead, I know that you were friends. And the guy's, like, having a breakdown. Junpei's having, like, an almost breakdown of going, like, this fucking idiot. There's no way that he thought I was friends with these guys. No shot that this guy's coming over here to say, like, you need to go pay respects and be like that they were your friends. Because if he was actually paying attention, he would see that I, I hated 
I hated them or they hated me, whichever way. And it looked like he was about to do something, but thankfully Yuji showing up and pantsing the fat man was enough to get him away from it. And Yuji's also able to notice right away. It's like, you hated that guy, right? That's why it was okay for me to pants him. <laughs> yeah, it was cool if I pants for that guy, right? <laughs> yeah, he's like, good. you hate him. So nobody wants someone they hate just hanging out in the front of their house, <laughs> which is very true. <laughs> no one does. Um, So I like that bit right there. And yeah, when this episode ends and he goes into overtime, because uh, it's really cool. Because when he when he's fighting him, he say it's uh, the another reason I really like Nanami is that he'll say a lot of things of that are badass, but then they're always like, "I want to finish before overtime hits." And he's talking about like, "I need to fit like I need to finish the work hour before I head into that." <laughs> like he's talking to, like a businessman or an ex salary man, always talking about like, "Oh yeah, I need to clock out before this time hits," and it's always really funny to me and it's also really cool as well so it was really fun to see him there i also liked how nanami does make a mention about how like oh yeah this guy is kind of similar to gojo in the sense of like um they're both carefree but then they're also murderous at any given time yeah they're like uh childlike and carefree but then they can immediately snap into like or, or no it's like uh they're they're childlike even about like violence like, they have a weird childlike air, even when it comes to, like, horrible murder and shit. And mm-hmm. the mental image he uses for that is a cartoonish Gojo skipping in a field of flowers saying, I'll murder you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Which is, uh, he's got him basically down pat in that way. <laughs> yep. Yep. So, really good episode. So good that when uh, it ended, I was like, fuck. I could, I could just if I if I had the ability to watch another episode, I totally would. But I will save that for two weeks from now when we can continue on and keep seeing it. And obviously, the, the Juju Stroll was amazing. Yes, it's Espe- fantastic. Juju yep, Stroll. especially when if uh, Nora beating up Panda, they have like a super detailed thing of her because she says like uh she asked him was like have you seen my jacket and when he goes like no when he's clearly wearing it she's asking him like oh is that so and she you can clearly see the hammer coming into frame yeah slowly raising up the hammer <laughs> yeah which is which is really good and i also like her reaction in general is like you guys are going out of line my skirt's missing too <laughs> it's like too much is being taken for me this is a harassment and also, just to have the reveal that it was Gojo wearing it the entire time. Also very good. Also, how many uh, dudes are just, like, ready to be like, oh, yeah, who cares? We could wear a skirt. The, the problem here isn't that they're wearing skirt. The problem here is that they've stolen them <laughs> for some reason. Yeah, that they have stolen someone else's skirt is the problem. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, it also did remind me of back when, um, with Toto, where he says, like, when he's asking the, the girl question, he also does ask, or it can be a man, it's all good. Like, he, he's like, whichever one, just tell me what you like. <laughs> whichever your preferences is good yeah, with me, man. I like how he's, like, I, not homophobic. He's, like, very accepting, but also it has to be, like, basic. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You can totally like dudes as long as you like hot dudes. It can't be yeah, about he- personality. Yeah, exactly. If you had told him it was I'm, I care about a man with a good personality, he would immediately went, hell no, nah, get out of here. He's like, no, I need you to say, like, I like a short man with a big butt, and then we can start talking. <laughs> but if you just tell me you just want a normal man, I'm out of here. Get the hell out of here, you boring-ass nerd. But yeah, this episode was really, really great. And it was great to see Nanami fight uh, Mahito as well. Because that... Uh, if I remember right, it's not too long from now. I think it's actually his explanation of how his overtime works is what caused the fan translator from Jujutsu Kaisen to say, I quit. <laughs> yeah, I think I around... Thought that was, I thought that was the Black Flash is when that happened. Mm, it's hard to say. I definitely remember Nanami was used as the art there, so it makes me say it's around this arc or so. But I definitely remember he was related to it because I remember it was during a really good um, fight, and I was just like, oh, man, that's a real bummer if they stop this. I don't think Jonah Jump that's is good. That's so funny. <laughs> yeah. So what do you feel about the episode, Zen? Uh, really good episode. The fight is really cool. The set piece for the fight is really cool. I love the sewer and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, one of my favorite things about Jujutsu Kaisen is that it uses cool like set pieces and the environment in combat a lot. Um, it, it's especially prevalent in the next episode, but it does happen some in this episode as well. Um, it's something that like a lot of old anime 
doesn't do that often. You know, like uh, Dragon Ball is always, let's go to a flat open ground and then fight in the sky. <laughs> or like... Da, um, da, 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 da. Yeah. Or like Naruto is always like, oh, we'll be like in some trees or something, but all we're going to use the trees for is like jumping off the trees. You know? Mm. Whereas like Jujutsu Kaisen, people will use the arena around them. Like it, it's an interactive part of the battle, which I like. Uh, a lot of yeah. manga are doing that more and more nowadays. That is um, pretty cool. Yeah, so I'm I'm a big fan of this fight, especially when it really starts kicking off. And I like Mahito's explanation of his powers, where it's like it doesn't really matter what you do to me because I can just heal myself because I can reshape my soul back to the way I want to be. Yeah, and he also gets like horse legs and stuff as well, right? Yeah, he like yeah he turns his legs into like animal legs to move faster and everything. Yeah, this ability of his is also extremely strong. <laughs> yeah, it sure is. Makes him a very hard man to fight, which made me very frustrated <laughs> for a lot of his <laughs> for a lot of his fights. Yeah, because, again, his vibes are atrocious. <laughs> Absolutely terrible. Some garbage man, <laughs> terrible person. Hate him every single time. But it is cool to see him get beat up and fight. So yeah. Can't wait for next episode to see more of it to go on, but we're going to have to wait two weeks from now, Zen, to continue on with the Jujutsu Kaisen, but yep. we're making our way through. We're almost... We're actually almost done, right? We're only, like... Uh, there's 20-something 20 24, episodes? right? The, the 24 that is the typical... That sounds... Yes, there's 24. Uh, that sounds right. Yeah, because so it should be two 12-episode cores. So that means two weeks from now we'll be able to do uh, episodes 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. And then eventually two weeks from there it's going to be 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. And then I believe we talked about how we were going to do the final four. If you want to do the final four episodes and, and the the movie, or if we wanted to keep the movie for its own thing, what do you think now? Uh, well, the movie is, uh, I think, like an hour and a half long, so it might be good to do the movie as its own thing. Mm, I would agree. So yeah, we're, yeah, it was basically, man, we don't have that many episodes left. We have maybe, at best, four more episodes of Jujutsu Kaisen, actually. Man, and then we have to wait for season two. <laughs> Yeah, well, thank God it's coming out this year. It is, unlike Chainsaw Man, which is coming out <laughs> unknown In three years. years from now, yeah. Oh, God. The Catastrophic d- years from now. I'll be dead by then, Zen. Or maybe the universe. <laughs> or maybe you'll be dead by then. <laughs> or maybe you'll have tweeted a 2,000 character tweet by then. Oh, Twitter will be dead long before that happens. That's true. That's we'll, true. We'll be on a new social networking site by then, complaining about them. But anyway, that's it for this episode. As always, if you want to see some more Zen and see Zen talk about Jujutsu Kaisen with the freedom of saying whatever he wants, <laughs> then you can go over to sh- to uh, his channel where he does Shonen and Chill with the Ocean Man. You can hear him. Actually, you can't say him for this week because it's on a two-week break, right? Uh, Just one week. Just one week? Okay. Uh, but this week's chapter we will be talking about. Okay, then next good. week's on break. Nice, 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 nice. Uh, hell of a way to choose. The, I, I love when manga... Yeah, what a time to go on fucking break. Great time. They always pick the best times to go on break. I remember that also really pissed me off about One Piece. Because One Piece is during Wano. There would be some huge revelation. And it's like, see you in two weeks. I'm like, bitch! Why are you, why are you doing... Yeah, you what do you mean two weeks? You couldn't have stopped this when, like, Chopper was making episodes or something. You couldn't have stopped it right there. You had to go for here. Whatever. They always pick the best time to go on break, which is the worst time because it's the one where you want to see more. But, yeah, you can follow him there. You can follow me over on here, right here, uh, my channel. Over on where you already are. Yeah, where, where you are right here. Just keep on watching my stuff and supporting me. Thank you very much. And also, you can follow me on Twitch if you want to see me play Genesis games with Zen. For the time being, it's a uh, bad Genesis games, except for it is the good Genesis game this Monday with Aladdin. I, I'm, I'm giving him a reprieve because I don't want him to to go on strike. Yeah, that would be <laughs> <laughs> that would be the fourth option is that you finally break me. The four ways for the show to end is <laughs> you finally give me the Genesis game that breaks me. I'll avoid uh, Bugs Bunny's Double Trouble. Oh, God, no. Okay, yeah. That one, and what's that Frankenstein game? That, I have no idea. 
Do you don't remember the Genesis Frankenstein game? Genesis no. Frankenstein game. Well, I don't mean Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. That was like an actual Frankenstein game. With the monster on it, but I can't find it right now. But either way, still plenty. Still going through that. And yeah, that's it for this episode of Shonen Archive. Thank you very much for watching. As always, if you made it this far, you can always show support by leaving a like. But it's good enough just to be watching it because it confuses YouTube a lot about my channel. <laughs> when they see how many people watch it and for how long, it really throws their metrics. So just keep doing it. And if anything, it's to spite YouTube. And we will see you guys next week in the next video. So say goodbye, Zen. Goodbye, everybody. Bye!